Hi, I'm Art. And I'm Janelle. For just $6,000 a year, our family of 10 eats a whopping 10,950 meals. That's 55 cents per meal. We love good nutritious food. And we love saving money. And we want to inspire you, even if you're new to cooking. We're, We're Parsnips and Parsimony. Parsimony. Welcome back to Parsnips and Parsimony. Today's video is going to be a little experimenting here. We're going to see if it's more cost effective to buy canned, already prepared beans from Aldi, or should we buy the dried beans and prepare them ourselves? I'm not sure the answer on this, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. We have lentils here. We are a huge bean family, eating family, and we buy these in bulk. I, when I was at shopping at Aldi today, they did not have lentils. This is a one way that I stretch our ground beef. But for today, we're making beans because we're doing a enchilada layered casserole. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you keep looking for that video. That should be up in a couple days on this channel right here. Please be sure to subscribe. Let's see which one's cheaper. So for cans of black beans, these were 48 cents a piece at Aldi. These dried pinto beans were on sale for, not on sale, regular price at Aldi. $1.45 for two pounds. So what's that? 72 and a half cents a pound? Yes. Great price for that. Black beans over here were two pounds for $2.45. So if you're really trying to stretch your pennies, Pinto beans right now appear to be the better value. And just to give you an idea, the lentils here, are I bought them in bulk, a 25-pound bag of lentils. Yes, we go through that many lentils for 70 cents a pound. I'm going to go ahead and weigh out one pound of beans. And I'm going to cook these in my Instant Pot just because it's so fast and easy in the Instant Pot. Okay, let's get to a pound here. There it is. One pound of beans. We're gonna go ahead and rinse these and then we're gonna add them to the Instant Pot and let these guys cook. Really, really easy. If you guys have never used an Instant Pot or any type of pressure cooker for cooking beans, it is a huge, huge time saver. So definitely check that out if you haven't gotten one yet. If you're new to cooking beans, Always rinse your beans because sometimes they do have sand from just coming and getting harvested. So always rinse them and then check for rocks or pebbles or just things that you don't want to eat. Uh, this bag was really good. I only found two iffy beans and they were, they were very clean. But they're all set. I'm going to go ahead and add them right to the instant pot here. Remember this is one pound of beans. And then to this we're going to add six cups of water. Do not add salt to them right now because they'll make them really tough and they won't cook right. So if you want to do more flavors, you can add cumin chili powder, you can add um, black pepper, you can add any of those bay leaves right now if you want. I'm cooking them plain because I'm not sure what all I'm going to end up cooking with them. So these will be cooked and probably used in recipes and frozen for a later date. Put the lid on, secure it, make sure you close the vent. This is open close it and then we're going to go ahead my machine has a setting for bean and chili if you don't have this setting you can just put it on manual pressure which is high pressure and i'm doing it for 30 minutes it's already set on 30 minutes and that's all i have to do i don't have to do anything else to it i'm just going to let it sit on the counter and cook those beans very very simple there it goes now i'm going to cook a pound of pinto beans and I go ahead, need to go ahead and weigh these out since I did buy the more bulk size package. A little bit more. There we go. One pound. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the black beans. I'm going to rinse them and sort them out looking for anything that might be dirty or just I'm not, not a premium bean. And these look, the ones that I get from Aldi almost always look fabulous. But double check whatever your supplier is because there are times that you do find rocks in there. Trust me, you don't want to rock these. It might break a tooth. Let's rinse these. Oops, what was that? Aha! Dirt, mud, and that's why you rinse these. 
same thing. We're going to add six cups of water to this. This is not my electric pressure cooker. This is going to go on my stove. I don't have two instant pots, so we're going to use the stove top for this other recipe. If you've never used a stove top pressure cooker, it's just like the instant pot, other than we have to watch the time on it and make sure it doesn't have too much pressure. So again, you're going to just put the lid on, find the notches, twist it to seal it. And you notice this one has a vent steam hole here. Some uh, pressure cookers have gauges. This one is going to be a weight and the weight has three different weights on it. So depending on if you need five pounds, 10 pounds or 15 pounds, high pressure is gonna be 15 pounds, low pressure is five pounds. We're gonna use high pressure. So we'll just put it on the 15 pound side let it jiggle for the amount of time that we want it, which in this case will be 30 minutes. And then that's it. It's as easy, almost as easy as the Instant Pot. The only thing you don't want to do with this is forget about it. You want to make sure that when it's jiggling, it's only going jiggle, jiggle, stop. Jiggle, jiggle, stop. You don't want it going jiggle, 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 because that means there's so much pressure in there that you know, you run the risk of it exploding. And I'm not here to scare anybody, but I want you guys to be safe if you're using these. This particular model, this is a Miro pressure cooker. It has a pressure relief valve. If this pops, you know that you had way too much pressure. This is just a safety thing. You may have had grandparents that told you stories of when they had a pressure cooker and it exploded and Aunt Gertrude almost died because the <laughs> pressure cooker exploded. They have safeties built in, but you still really need to be present and make sure nothing happens to that. That's the difference between the electric. The electric, you can forget, set it, you can forget about it, you don't need to worry about it. This guy, you need to stay in your kitchen and pay attention to it. This is the weighted gauge. You see five pounds, 10 pounds, and then 15 pounds. We're gonna put it on the 15 pounds and just put it on the top like that. And once this thing starts jiggling, and that's what it sounds like, it's just like We're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes, and that's how long we'll cook it for. There it is, 23 minutes left of the first set of black beans. And I'll leave the link for my particular model of Instant, Instant Pot. This is an eight quart Instant Pot just because of our family size, we needed the larger one. They have smaller ones that cook one pound of beans just perfectly fine, but I'll put the link for this particular model down in the description below. going to release the pressure we're going to let this manually release the pressure if you see this red knob here that is up which means this is under pressure we're not going to touch this we're not going to touch any of the buttons we're just going to let it go and when this knob goes down or after 20 minutes whichever one comes first this should be ready to go if the knob isn't down after 20 minutes we can turn this and we'll let the rest of the pressure out and check these season them get them ready to eat Go ahead and drain these. And I, you notice I have my three bowls, so I'm going to have my canned black beans, then I'm going to have our home cooked black beans and our home cooked pinto beans. I'm going to show you the difference in quantity, and we're going to see how we're doing on pricing and if one is cheaper than the other. It says 15 and a half ounces here for the weight of the can, but I bet we just lost a bunch of weight when I drained that. So that was a 15 and a half ounce can and we lost <laughs> five and a quarter. So we lost five and a quarter ounces. Wow. That's a lot to lose. But no matter which way you, whether you cook your beans at home or if you buy the can, beans are still a cheap food. So whatever way you cook it, if you are trying to really stretch your budget, beans are the way to do it. This is all done. The pressure is totally down. You can see the little red pressure button is down, which means the pressure is gone. We'll just open this just in case there's any pressure there. And when you open this, always open it away from you so the steam doesn't get all in your face because there's a lot of steam. And you can see there's a lot of liquid in here. So we're gonna go ahead and drain these and then we'll see how they compare. This might be too hot to handle. Yes, I need hot mitts. That's a lot of beans for a pound of beans. 
I don't see how much a pound of beans weigh. I don't know if they're all going to fit, Art. Sure, we'll make them fit. Come on! Wow, one pound of beans turn into one pound, start two pounds, six and a half ounces of beans. Wow. All right, so... We'll do the math in a minute. Yeah, I'm not doing Don't math. do the math right now. <laughs> Okay, and the last one we have to do are the pinto beans. Whenever you're using pressure cookers, again, make sure the pressure is always down before you try to open it. So in this case, on this one, you're just gonna take the weight off, and it looks good. And I'm gonna twist that, open it up. Again, always open it away from your face because it's hot in there. All right, they look good. Check those out. So do you think they're gonna weigh more or less or the same as the other ones? I would think they'd be close. Okay. We're going to find out. Moment of truth here. There's a lot of beans in there, though. I look how easy these were to cook, though. It did not take long at all, Art. No. Okay, that's all the beans. There it is. Two pounds, seven and a quarter ounces. And so now we need to figure out the math which is the math whiz is behind the camera. Uh -huh. So we're going to be right back after we calculate the numbers and we're going to figure out which was cheaper, dried or canned. Moment of truth here. Let's see which one's the winner. This is, these are our dried black beans. They've been cooked and have absorbed liquid. So it works out after they're cooked to be 52 cents a pound. That's pretty cheap for beans. Now we move on to our canned black beans and just looking at the quantity difference, you know, I, I think I'd rather have those rather than these. This is more. These were 87 cents a pound. Good to know. Now we have... Still not a bad price though. No, absolutely not. If, if this is all you have time for, it's still a really good price. Now we come to our dried pinto beans. And after they've been cooked, absorbed all the liquid, we are at, drum roll please, 30 cents a pound. That's a lot of food for 30 cents a pound. So there you have it, all broken down. Pinto beans were the best deal for today when we shopped at Aldi. But if you don't have a choice, can is definitely not that bad of a choice. I'm gonna go ahead and cook on my lazy layered enchilada casserole now. If you want to see that recipe, I'm gonna be using our beans. You can find that link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe, enjoy this video, and we'll see you for our next video. Bye!